Good morning and welcome all to today's webinar. I'm Aranza Zubalan, part of the editorial board of BuildUp. BuildUp is Europe's largest international portal for energy efficiency and renewable energy on buildings. It is a unique community that provides the opportunity to discuss, contribute and collaborate with other experts in this field. BuildUp aims to bring together stakeholders working in the building sector to re-up uh, re uh, collective intelligence about energy uh, reduction by encouraging knowledge exchange. Our editorial work is organized around a topic of the month, which allows us to go deeper into a specific theme. Each month, several items are on produced as overview and technical articles and infographics, but not exclusively. BuildUp also offers the opportunity to host webinars on all, the, on all the topics related to energy efficiency. More recently, BuildUp has opened the opportunity to distinguish experts in the field to share their knowledge in front of our cameras in the BuildUp expert talks. BuildUp portal shares daily the most relevant events in the field of energy efficiency and renewable energy, but also participates actively in many European events around the year as EPV Center and River Conference, Horizon 2020, Interreg and Cost Action events, Covenant of Mayors, and much more, with the aim of further disseminating the results and helping to create high quality media content. Build up is updated daily, reaching around 120 new items each month. But Build Up is not only us. Build Up is a community and we invite you to be part of it. By becoming a member, you can contribute uploading your own content and promoting your own news, events, or publications. Build Up will help you to reach a broader audience through our social media channels and newsletter. It is a pleasure to host today's webinar entitled Energy Regeneration and Storage Technologies in Buildings, which is organized by BuildUp under the January 2023 topic of the month, Renewable Heating Solutions for Buildings. The webinar will present two projects that explore technological solutions for heating, cooling, coupled with air renewals as Sun Horizon and Happening, and two projects that explore aspects of energy and thermal energy storage as Ministore and Convutes. In today's agenda, Serena Cotton, project manager at RENA Consulting, will introduce the Sun Horizon project by providing some general information on its vision, lessons learned, and objectives. Andrea Gabaldon, research and development engineer in Cardiff Technology Center, will showcase some of the preliminary results from the review of monitoring data production, collection, and operation of the Sun Horizon installed technology packages in the case of Madrid and San Cugat in Spain and Riga in Latvia. John Iturralde Iñarga, researcher at Fundación Tecnalia Research and Innovation, will present the happening project background and current barriers for the renovation of multifamily dwellings illustrated in three demonstration cases in Pasaya in Spain, Liesen in Austria and Bersuolo in Italy. Carlos Ochoa, Building Energy Senior Researcher at International Energy Research Center and Georgios Martinopoulos at Academic Associate at International Hellenic University and Research Associate at Center for Research and Technology, ELAS, will present the operating principles of the Minister Thermal Storage System, which is based on a thermal storage solution that uses solar-based renewable energy sources for use in residential settings. The final presentation will be from Arnaud Branch, a research engineer at Commissariat à l'énergie atomique et aux énergies alternatives, CEA, and Combiotes project coordinator, and Eleonora Alamaro, project manager of European projects in energy sustainability at AMIRES. They will present the state of the art of the Combio project, highlighting the first results and commenting on the challenges the project is facing. Audience is welcome to send us questions through the platform. These questions will be answered at the end of the presentations in a session with all the project presenters. I leave the floor now to our first speaker, Serena Cotton, who will introduce the Sun Horizon project. Thank you very much and enjoy. Thank you very much for the introduction. So good morning, everyone. I'm Serena Scotton. I'm working as a project manager at Rina Consulting, and I'm also the project coordinator 
for uh, the Sun Horizon project. Today, as I um, mentioned before by the moderator, I will just provide you a brief presentation of the Sun Horizon uh, project while my um, colleague, Andrea Gabaldon, um, will dive deeper into the preliminary results that uh, we have in uh, Sun Horizon. Now, yeah. Let's uh, start talking about the project. So Sun Horizon um, is, composed, um, is composed by five technology packages and it aims at uh, covering at least the 80% of the heating and cooling needs of both refurbished and new single uh, multifamily houses and also tertiary buildings. Sun Horizon, it is an Horizon 2020 funded project and it actually started back in uh, 2018. The aim of the project is to demonstrate up to TRL7 innovative and reliable heat pump solutions that will act uh, properly coupled uh, um, with advanced solar panels. And uh, this combination aims at providing heating and cooling both in residential and tertiary buildings. Um, thus to lower the emission, lower the energy bills, and also of course decrease the dependency uh, from fossil fuel. Here uh, in the bullet points, you can see uh, a list of the main objectives of the project, um, such as reduce uh, uh, also the heating and cooling technologies, CAPEX and OPEX, increase uh, the Sun Horizon heating and cooling technologies performances, and also um, we aim at promoting cloud-based functional monitoring for heating and cooling pro uh, purposes. And of course, a key aspect of this project is also the, to promote the replication of the Sun Horizon technology packages um, in the European market uh, once the project uh, ends. Um, here, an overview of the consortium. So in Sun Horizon, um, we have 21 partners. Uh, as you can see, uh, partners located all around Europe. It is an industry-driven consortium. Uh, we have indeed 12 in the industrial partners um, coming uh, from large enterprises and uh, SMEs. We have five uh, top-level academic uh, um, institutions and four associations and uh, stakeholders acting as demo sites. In this slide, um, I would like to give you um, more information about the five technology packages um, that we have developed in Sun Horizon. So um, these five um, technology packages uh, present different combinations of all the technologies involved in the project. So as uh, I um, said before, heat pumps uh, and solar technologies are the key um, technology in the Sun Horizon project. Uh, so for the heat pumps, uh, we have a um, hybrid absorption uh, compressor casket chiller provided by Fahrenheit. Uh, we have uh, um, BDR um, thermia heat pumps, and also we have gas-driven heat pump provided by Boosted. While regarding the solar technologies, um, we have hybrid PVT panels provided by Dual Sun and vacuum solar thermal panels provided by um, TVP Solar, and an hybridization of heat pumps, solar thermal, and PV provided by BDR. While um, in this technology package, we also have a uh, important storage component. So we have uh, um, a stratified thermal storage tank uh, provided by uh, Rastetherm. So um, these are, let's say, the main technologies involved in the project. And by combining them uh, in different ways, we obtain five technology packages that are uh, mainly tested in uh, real demo sites located all around Europe. And uh, the technology packages aims at covering um, space cooling, space heating, and domestic hot water needs uh, in uh, the um, demo sites. In this slide, um, we uh, indicate where uh, the um, Sun Horizon demo sites are located and where we are testing uh, each technology package. 
Um, so uh, we have uh, one demo site in uh, Berlin, which is uh, located in a cold uh, uh, European climate area. And there we are testing a parallel integration of uh, um, TVP and Bustit, and uh, uh, we are providing uh, heating uh, and uh, needs uh, in a smaller residential house. Um, while in uh, Nuremberg, uh, we are testing technology package too, as well as in uh, Riga. So let's say two cold uh, climatic areas, uh, but in different countries. Then uh, technology package free in uh, um, Sakugat, which is a solar driven heat pump for um, cooling. Uh, it is tested in a tertiary center, um, sorry, in a tertiary building dedicated to um, uh, um, civic and social activities. Um, while technology package four, uh, it is tested in uh, Madrid in a large residential building. Uh, and here we have a combination of the uh, dual sun uh, hybrid PVT panels with um, um, <clears throat> VDR heat pump. As you can see from the schematic technology package five, it is not reported because indeed it was only tested in a, a simulation in three locations. Um, so uh, we are not testing it in, a, a, let's say, a, a real um, demo site. And uh, that, with that, uh, um, this is all from my side. And I will leave the floor to my colleague uh, Andrea Cavaldon from Cartif to provide you more uh, data on the preliminary results. Thank you. Thank you, Serena, for the introduction and Sun Horizon project. So, as you have seen, we have seized six demonstration sites. and. Out of these six, only three have started the implementation uh, and we have some results for you to, to show you. So uh, we start with Riga demo site. In this uh, demo site, as Serena has explained, we have uh, implemented technology package two, which consists on a hybrid uh, photovoltaic thermal panel that drives the evaporator of a gas-driven heat pump to provide space heating and domestic hot water. The electricity production from these panels also uh, cover the electricity needs of the, of the houses. There are two houses in, in Riga, uh, single houses, um, and, and in these uh, two houses we have learned uh, that, for instance, the, the hybrid solar panels, uh, as they have properly in, in, the, in the pipes, uh, they have caused a variation of pressure in the commissioning that have affected the installation. This uh, variation of pressure, among other things that have happened, uh, led to the gas driven heat pump uh, to have some leaks and finally it stopped running. Nevertheless, uh, as the gas driven heat pump had a secondary boiler uh, that provided the, the heating uh, as a backup, uh, we were still able to provide some savings, especially in Sunisi House, around 1,700 kilowatt hours. But as you know, uh, the, the, in the world, there is, there is an increase on the cost of gas, which has also led to not have a cost savings in this, in this house. Anyway, the comfort it was always met. And for you to know, this heat pump will be replaced with a hybrid concept with a compression electric heat pump and a gas boiler for peaks, which will allow also the, to use more the PV production uh, for driving the electric heat pump. If regarding the electricity balance, uh, I'm gonna show you the, the, the case of Sunisi because it's the, the, the one that also will apply a hybrid controller, uh, an, an optimizer of the, of the PV production uh, and, and, and the heat pump production. In this case, uh, we have uh, we have been able to achieve 40% uh, of self-consumption in, in the house and a solar electric efficiency of around seven, uh, 17%. The excess of energy uh, of the house uh, is exported to the grid and that have allowed to save uh, 370 euros only in three months. 
so it's successfully uh, going, although the, 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 there are problems in the gas driven heat pump. In technology package three in San Cugat, uh, we have a vacuum solar panels that uh, in winter they provide the uh, space heating, and when there is no solar, uh, there is an existing he electric heat pump that will provide the um, the reversible heat pump, sorry, that will provide the, the needs. In, in summer, the solar production drives the, uh, an absorption chiller uh, that, as Renena said, is hybrid. It has a part that is com um, a normal compression heat pump and a part that is an absorption, and that allows to achieve a great uh, performance in the technology package and provide the space cooling. In, in this tertiary building. For this site, we don't have uh, yet data to show to you, but uh, we, uh, from the preliminary analysis made in transit, we have estimated that the, we will be able to achieve 30, 33% of gas savings, as well as 35% of cost savings. Uh, if during the installation of the technologies, uh, for instance, as you can see in the picture, we have a very huge thermal tank, and this led to to uh, reinforce uh, to have to um, foresee a reinforcement of the of the floor, uh, which increased the cost of the installation. But anyway, uh, now the TV, uh, the solar panels and all the systems is producing and 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 providing the the needs of the uh, of this building uh, meeting all the comfort needs and and gas savings so in technology package four uh, we have uh, applied to uh, social housing in madrid and in this case the hybrid panels uh, also drive the uh, evaporator of a heat pump to provide space heating in domestic hot water in winter and in, in summer, uh, it provides the domestic water and space cooling. We also have a, a compression heat pump to provide as a backup all the needs uh, when, when there is no, no sun. Uh, the dual sun panels also produce electricity that uh, allows to reduce the cost of the, of the, of the entire system and, and provide uh, an affordable uh, heating and cooling and domestic hot water production to the houses, which is very important because, as I said, it's social housing. Uh, in this case, we don't, don't have data yet to show to you, but uh, from the estimations from Transis, we got that it, it can be we can uh, achieve savings on emissions from 55% to 70% of gas emissions and 37% of cost savings. In this case, also the the PVT panels uh, had some problems during the commissioning, but they are being solved. And uh, but still, the the brine water heat pump that is coupled with the solar panels has not been uh, run yet. Uh, but anyway, as we have the air water heat pump as a, as a backup, all the demands are being covered anyway. And you have here some pictures. Uh, overall, the, there are many lessons learned from this project. It has been running from a long time. And it was very important for us, uh, the collaboration, because as you can imagine, uh, having so many technical providers uh, at to be able to, to uh, design a technology package is important to coordinate and integrate the inputs from all of them. Uh, and it was difficult, but finally we got it thanks to a good collaboration. Um, also, we man encountered some barriers such as low social as acceptance because these are uh, unknown technologies and especially as they are coupled together, uh, the installers were not very hesitant to, to apply to the tendering procedures uh, because of the unknown of these configurations. Furthermore, the inclusions of installers um, uh, had language barriers and studies were translated for the tendering procedures, which led a lot of um, delays. And 
uh, as all other projects, we are facing shortages of installers and suppliers, and this is very important. Um, well, this has affected us very uh, hard because uh, of the risk that the technology packages has because of the, the uh, unknown technologies. Many uncertainties uh, led to the project to have some delays, but anyway, uh, it, we are on track and we are demonstrating that the technology packages of sun horizons can provide heating and cooling to residential and tertiary buildings with lower emissions, less cost, and more energy savings than conventional technologies. So thank you all. If you have any questions, we can answer them at the end. Thank you very much to both of you, Serena and Andrea. Uh, so interesting insights about the um, uh, San Horizon project. <clears throat> Very important right now for, for residential. I leave the floor now to Johnny Turralde Iñarga, a researcher at Fundación Tecnalia Research and Innovation, uh, who will explain uh, another project on, on collecting. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Arantxa, for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm Johnny Turralde from Tecnalia. And I will present um, a project which also is um, acting, let's say, on similar topics or with the same philosophy as Sun Horizon. But I think uh, we are proposing some other different technologies as well, which uh, may be very interesting as a complementary, <clears throat> let's say, proposal for for the common uh, goals that we all share in this case, which are, let's say, the decarbonization of the um, of buildings. In, in our case, um, Happening Project is focused on the retrofitting of existing buildings. And in this retrofitting, uh, the, more specifically, the, the project aims only at uh, active solutions. So, um, of course, the first step also always is to, to retrofit the envelope and, uh, you know, to, to get, to, to apply uh, measures for the passive uh, part of the building, but in this case we are uh, only acting at the active part. So in, uh, within this framework, um, heat pumps are clearly, as we can see already now in the market, a really strong technology that can uh, help to decarbonize um, the building sector. And um, this is because we can easily combine them and this is really important to to have a hybrid solution of heat pumps with other renewable energy production technologies like for example PV, pvt as presented by <clears throat> by my colleagues in the in the previous presentation but yet um, we don't see much progress on this and these kind of renovations are still marginal so this this project happening works at uh, fostering or trying to solve um, these these barriers that may be uh, hindering the the implementation of these solutions. And what are these barriers? Well, we have two kind of barriers: technical ones and non-technical ones. The technical ones mainly um, are that when you go when you uh, install a heat pump uh, in an existing building, um, you can face several problems. Uh, one of them is that high temperature required by conventional heating uh, systems, meaning the meters. You have some conventional or old radiators that require high temperatures, which leads also to high thermal losses in the distribution. If you have a central solution with a heat pump, let's say, for instance, air to water, then in the distribution, depending on the conditions of the demand, if there's a low demand or also because of the high temperature required by the um, emitters, you often get quite high um, thermal losses uh, in the distribution. So in order to solve these problems and try to be more efficient in the implementation of heat pumps, the happening uh, project comes with an innovative concept, uh, which consists mainly in splitting somehow the um, thermal gap, which you need to cover for the um, in order to get to the to the consumption temperature. Meaning that, again, if we have, for instance, an air to water central heat pump, typically you will need to uh, heat up here in the central installation up to the, say, 
60 degrees or 80 depending on the or 70 let's say depending on the on the kind of emitters that you have which often leads to uh, you know uh, requirements for additional power here and high uh, distribution losses but this concept what we do is to have a central air to water heat pump then uh, an energy, energy storage uh, thermal energy storage so some accumulation here and with what we do with this temp with this heat pump is only to let's say cover half of the gap that we need to reach in the end and we only generate temperature at around 20 30 degrees and half this uh, water uh, in the distribution of low temperature which minimizes the the, the heat losses and then at individual level uh, uh, so in each dwelling you have a water to water heat pump which is hanging from this uh, water loop and then it covers the um, the last uh, thermal gap uh, until the consumption temperature on top of this we have uh, some renewable generation so pv or pvt which can be used easily by the central heat pump and uh, the beauty of this system is that um, with this configuration we managed to decouple the generation from the consumption and this leads to multiple benefits like for instance the air to water heat pump which is relying on the outdoor temperature you can uh, play around with the optimization and the smart controls in order to operate it only in the best conditions available during the day which are the central hours of the day in which you also have the highest uh, solar production which in the end increases a lot the cop of this heat pump and then you can uh, as i said play around with this thermal storage to decouple this uh, generation and use it for later on and um, um, you know providing the, the 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 last gap with the individual uh, heat pumps and also having this individual heat pumps means that for each dwelling you can adapt much better to uh, the demand uh, which is uh, a particular um, you know a particular number for each of the dwellings and also the cop of these heat pumps is increased as you can always provide a constant temperature uh, for the, the evaporator side. So, also this leads to the possibility of having different um, configurations within the same building because all of the um, uh, dwellings, let's say, are connected to this central loop, but then in each dwelling you can decide the heat pump plus emitter that best suits the your needs or your requirements in terms of the works required for installation the costs and then the efficiency and the kind of emitter that you prefer uh, in your at your home to to provide the, the heat so you can go from conventional radiators uh, with a for instance propane heat pump that is uh, suitable with these temperatures then you can switch also to lower temperature emitters like pine coals and also micro heat pumps, which are in the development of this of this system of this uh, project, and I will show a bit later on. Um, then you also have some barriers uh, which are non-technical, and these are mainly, as uh, also commented in the previous uh, presentation, the lack of information, um, the uncertainty that it generates about the performance of these kind of systems also lack of knowledge or, or training uh, of, of installers and the costs um, that uh, are usually higher, the initial cost, the implementation cost that then you will recover in the OPEX. In order to deal with this, uh, within the period, we, we also um, uh, demonstrate the, the versatility, the scalability and, and, and the, the economical viability of this solution and provide also guidelines for installers uh, business models and so on and uh, by this, uh, disseminating the, the results we can show that this solution is valid and like this uh, make it uh, make the, it, its implementation wider in order to meet these goals uh, we have uh, uh, a consortium with uh, various um, let's say um, profiles so we have um, research centers we also have um, heat pump manufacturers, 
ESCOs, uh, housing entities, and so on, so that we can cover all of these uh, tasks uh, successfully. And now I will just show uh, some of the demo cases that are in different status of, our, of uh, implementation. And these demo cases basically show the replicability and scalability of the system because we have um, three different climates and different um, buildings in size which show also the different configurations of this um, system and, uh, and, yeah, and the ability to, to apply it in different conditions. So first one is in the northern Spain, close to San Sebastian, where the uh, weather climate is quite mild. And this is the smallest one with eight uh, dwellings. Currently they had um, individual, individual gas boilers with a solar thermal installation which was um, was not in proper condition and will be now replaced by uh, PV panels. And uh, you can see here, um, let's say a more technical uh, diagram, so sort of a PID diagram of the concept. Uh, yeah, as I said, we have the central air to water heat pumps. Here's the, the buffer tank, which is the key to decouple the generation from the consumption, low temperature distribution, and then uh, water to water propane heat pumps uh, with an integrating domestic hot water tank and we in this case the the radiators were already um, let's say no low temperature but uh, double radiators and so on so uh, we can reuse them which is also a, 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 a very important point uh, when you when we are talking about retrofitting it is really important to make uh, the most out of the the current installation and be able to reuse it as much as possible in order to um, to minimize the cost and make it uh, make it easier to implement the solution. Then the second in size uh, is in Verzolo, north uh, western Italy, close to the Alps. Um, in this case, we have the hottest summers of all uh, the three uh, demos. So in this one, the cooling uh, demand is relevant. So far, in the with the old system, they didn't have uh, cooling. So now, with the new one, they they have, which is an improvement for for also the comfort, not only the, the you know the efficiency and the cost and so on. Um, the previous one was a so, uh, social housing. In this case, we, it's a private uh, privately owned building, uh, which also sh shows, let's say, that um, uh, we can deal with different kind of uh, conditions in terms of uh, the the type of buildings and how they are managed. <clears throat> in this case, it's, an, it's a quite old building. Uh, actually, it's a historic one, so it's uh, preserved and, and so on, but it, uh, uh, it was renovated in terms of uh, passive measures, so the envelope and so on was ret uh, retrofitted uh, recently. So far, they had a central um, heat, um, sorry, uh, gas boiler for heating and domestic water, and then fan coils as emitters. And as you will see now, with the, some of the new technology developed in the project, the micro heat pumps, it's really convenient to, and really easy to replace these kind of, uh, these kind of emitters. As you can see here, these are the old emitters. So uh, quite big and old uh, fan coils, which are mounted both on the wall and uh, within the, the roof. The new units are um, quite thinner, but uh, one important point here is that they are not just emitters in like a fan coil uh, that needs the hot or cold water to to to, emit, to release, let's say, the, the, the heat to, to the ambient. In this case, they are micro heat pumps, which means that they receive the water at this uh, neutral temperature and they have a compressor and a small refrigerant uh, refrigerant cycle within the, 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 the each of the units and it, they can provide both heating and cooling within the units and this uh, at, this means that uh, they can operate really efficiently in the in the temperatures that we are having in this system and they also have low temperature for condensation and so on so these units will be really efficient or are being really efficient because these are these as you can see are already installed these are some pictures of the of the installation but they are currently running and running running fine <clears throat> and then the last uh, 
demo is in Austria, where the winters are the coldest. It's the largest uh, building, actually, is let's say, like you can see here, a series of um, uh, houses, uh, which are connected now with the with the new system and a central uh, installation. And then they have, um, well, as you can see here, the previous the previous situation was really chaotic, let's say, because some of them had gas boilers, uh, some others uh, still had um, really old uh, wooden stoves and so on. So this also shows that, um, let's say, we can, um, even if, of course, the implementation costs are in this case higher, the system can be implemented in, in, in some buildings with really uh, various or different uh, conditions in terms of uh, current equipment. <clears throat> so now, in this case, the system will be really, really similar to the one that I showed for Spain, um, but of course, larger uh, in, in volume and, and, and capacity, which also shows the, um, the scalability of the concept. So yeah, just a recap. Uh, let's say the main innovation of the of the project is the the heat distribution of the all, all let's say the philosophy of the concept behind the the this heating system that you decouple the generation from the from the consumption and this leads to really high COPs and the possibility of maximizing and the renewable energy that you are able able to put into the system. Um, yeah, and to provide the, the, the service uh, really efficiently with the reduction of uh, thermal losses, high COP for both uh, central and individual heat pumps. And as you have seen, seen uh, now with the demos, uh, it, pro it provides yeah, a high versatility in terms of uh, implementation possibilities and scalability uh, because it can be applied in different climate, uh, uh, building sizes, and, and so on. So that was it from my from my side. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, we can. I will I will answer them later on. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for, very much for putting multifamily dwellings and renovation key topics uh, on the pipeline, so so our audience can ask. I remind you that you can ask whatever you want in the questions. Uh, please send it to us. We will do the Q and A session at the end of the presentations. And we go now with the minister uh, project that will be presented by Carlos Ochoa and Giorgios Martinopoulos. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arancha. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Carlos Ochoa. I'm a senior researcher at the International Energy Research Center based in Cork, Ireland. And my colleague, Giorgios Martinopoulos, will assist me with the technical aspects of the of the presentation. Uh, the name of the project is uh, MINISTOR, which stands for Minimal Energy Storage System. And why uh, we need thermal storage systems is because we have a large potential of energy use from renewable energy sources. But unfortunately, renewable energy sources also have a high variability. For example, we don't have enough sunshine during the winter, wind can is uh, not well predicted so we need somewhere to store the energy that can be generated from these sources so the main project objective is to develop a compact residential thermal storage system that is based on thermochemical materials this is part of the novelty of the project because we have different uh, levels of storage first we have uh, water which is one of the mainly used systems. Then we have phase change materials, and then we have thermochemical storage, which means use of chemicals and salts that have a very high thermal storage, but up to the moment, they have not been well exploited. So why mini store? Because also we could have a large type of storage, let's say based on water, but it will be massive and will not cover all the needs for a residential building. And in this case, we also uh, try to make a storage that is both useful for heating and cooling because we could use the same variability for these energies, which uh, varies in different degrees in Europe. At the same time, a uh, minister will provide electricity 
in order to help to pay itself because as we will see there is an issue about the costs also a minister will take into account the consumer desires in terms of the comfort that they want so that it can the system can supplement the needs of the that are provided by renewable energy and we are aiming to reduce the energy consumption by 44 percent at the same time the return of investment will be in around six more a little bit more than six and a half years then the impact that we want to achieve is to achieve the minimal energy storage because uh, it will be around 0.7 of cubic meter of combined storage then as i said before trying to leverage the variability of renewable energy to increase the energy security minimize the environmental impact by reducing the use of fossil fuels and this will lead to a decarbonized building stock in the european union as well to support the energy policies and the energy market this is the initial concept as it was seen from the proposal and the system as you can see in the in the upper right hand corner of the screen is powered by pvt panels which stands for photovoltaic thermal energy which generates both heat and electricity the electricity is stored in a conventional battery which is then sold to the household or to the grid as needed then the heat is stored in thermochemical material which generates a reaction that is then dispatched to either heating or cooling components which are used for the heating or cooling in the household the system is controlled by a home energy management system which has a user interface and also responds to the grid signals in order to provide the electricity either to sell it or to store it for later use in the house according to electricity prices as mentioned it uses uh, solar based renewable energy sources and it's using the thermochemical material in terms of calcium chloride ammonated salts and why is ammonia used because it has a high power capability and as well it doesn't corrode steel which is the container of the of the salts and it's used also as a gas that it's being pressurized to have a reversible uh, reaction the phase change materials are the ones that receive this heating energy and is used for latent heat and they are used to supplement the heating and cooling directly to the household in terms of calculations it has been calculated that the energy storage density is 180 kilowatt hour per cubic meter which is more than 10 times that the energy storage density of water as mentioned also the heat input is made by the photovoltaic thermal panels which have a higher concentrating capability that also produce electricity as well as hot water and the home energy management system that is uses an internet of things platform to best manage the elements this is the detailed design of the components as you can see from the left hand side this is the photovoltaic thermal collector which uh, deposits the hot water that has been heated by the sun on the buffer tank and this is then heat is then uh, exchanged to the thermochemical reactor that provides the cycle of the ammonia which then releases the heat the heat is then upgraded by a heat pump which is then dispatched to either a cold PCM or a hot PCM for use in the household. So to take it into more detail, this is the charging phase of, for example, in winter uh, season, the electricity is stored either as electricity or as solar heat, which is carried through water, which is then used for an endothermic reaction in the thermochemical reactor gaseous ammonia is released which is then uh, 
is then circulated to an am ammonia tank, which uh, pressurizes it and becomes liquid. And this releases heat, which is then sent to the heat pump, which is either used for the household or for the phase change uh, uh, material. Then the discharging phase, for example, in winter, is that the ammonia is evaporated through the same compressor. And again, we are releasing heat through an exothermic reactor, which takes place in the thermochemical reactor. And then covers the heating needs or is stored again in the phase change material for later use. We have calculated that the overall coefficient of performance is equal to 1.8. Then the discharging phase, for example, for cooling, this can be in warm summer nights, is that again the ammonia is evaporated in the reactor, and then it's collected again in the thermochemical reactor tubes, which is then sent to a cold PCM for storage, or it can be used directly in the cooling systems. So this reaction is uh, renewable. And it they can be done in charging and discharging, so uh, we can have a high efficiency and the system is uh, sustainable by itself. The system will be demonstrated in three demonstration sites, which are spread around Europe, and I will describe them briefly. One will be a single family house that is located in Cork City where we are also located, and is managed by the Cork City Council. And it will have, because of the high latitude, it's gonna have both a photovoltaic thermal collector and a flat plate thermal collector. Then we also have a demonstration site in a, an apartment located in a student dormitory in Santiago de Compostela in Spain, which is also a temperate climate. And we also have the uh, PVT collectors and heat pump. The other demo site is a single family home located in Sopron, Hungary, which has a continental climate. And we will also use the same configuration, similar configuration as in Cork. We also have the demonstration site in Chimeria, Greece, which is a Mediterranean climate. And it's also a student dormitory and we'll have both the PVT collectors, but it will be mostly based on biomass, which is uh, used as the starting point for the for the heat. The concept will be trial first in Thessaloniki, in Greece, in the smart home facilities of CERT, which is one of our partners, and it will be at the, the pre demonstration, and we'll have also the the PVT panels. At the moment, we have seen the projects, but why we don't have enough of high thermal energy storage in our houses? And that's why they are being researched still. Uh, we can put it down to uh, these elements, for example, technology, price, uh, regulation, and consumer acceptance. For example, for technology, it is known that thermochemical materials have a high storage capacity, but they require new methods to take advantage of their properties because they are salt, so they can be reactive. You need to see which is the material that best interacts with them. So this technology needs to be researched. Also, price is very important because there are long-established technologies used for thermal storage, such as hot water tanks even though, of course, the capacity is not as large enough as phase change materials or thermochemical materials. Then the regulation must also be taken into account because they have to consider the new processes. There are new processes, for example, uh, robots that can weld to high precision, which uh, make it a uh, an improved uh, form of providing energy to, to homes and to making reactions last longer, as well as consumer acceptance, in which consumer confidence must be built through dissemination and demonstration, 
because if not, it will not be known, and if it's not known, it will not be accepted. So having said this, when can we have this high thermal energy storage in our homes? It needs to be, the technology again needs to be tested in different housing conditions, because at the moment, as you have seen, most of our demo sites are for single family homes. And some of them, and only one of them is, uh, two of them, sorry, are located in apartments style of buildings, so that we can see for example, in real conditions, if there is reliability of the thermal dispatch in terms of having enough energy during the, the day to be collected for, for the night, that it can be stored and then dispatched again. For price, there, this is like a quagmire. If you don't produce enough, then you don't have a, a lower price. And if, and if there is no lower price, then you don't have enough production. So a business model has to be developed so that this technology can be adopted, as well as uh, using suitable standards for, for production that can be also used in residential uh, type of buildings. The regulation has to take into account the new processes I've mentioned, but this uh, needs industry consensus, and the industry consensus is also needs momentum, and the momentum is only done when people are demanding this type of uh, systems and for this uh, demand can be built through the consumer acceptance and consumer acceptance will only be provided when consumers can see this that this product is within their budget and also is providing enough uh, energy as required because if they, it's, it's uh, cheap enough but it's not uh, uh, providing enough energy then it's not exactly successful so then uh, this is my presentation and the conclusions is that Ministor will increase the use of the renewable energy sources by making it more flexible to store both uh, heat and electricity. And this will be serve as a backup when the renewables have low availability. So you could have perfectly your PVT panels supplying you with heat, but then storing it when the, let's say there is enough sunshine and when they say you have a, a overcast day, then minister can come in and provide you with the heat. Also, there are new thermal energy storage that are available, but if you want to have a widespread use, there are challenges because we are using standards for industrial refrigeration, which is the only thing that exists that could apply to minister. Also, note the concept of residential energy storage doesn't exist in standards and regulation when it comes to heat. There is for electricity, but it's not, there is none for thermal energy. So when we address these challenges, we can uh, change the scalability of the concept in order to become financially viable and acceptable in the, for the end users in the short term. So this was my presentation. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to make them. Thank you very much, Carlos. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgios uh, will will join us afterwards in the in the Q and A questions. If there are some technicals, because I'm already seeing some technical questions with the corner of my eye, we go <laughs> now to the last presentation um, where Arno, uh, I think it's Eleonora who is going to yeah. do the presentation. Uh, and we are finishing with Combio, Combio tests that have just uh, been awarded. So thank you very much, Eleonora. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Eleonora Lamaro and I'm the project manager of Combio test. Combio test is for compact bio-based thermal energy storage for buildings. So it's pretty much related to the previous project. And Uh, it's a research and innovation project and it's an uh, Horizon 2020 project that was initially founded in um, November 2019, but then because of the insolvency of one of the partners, uh, we had that 18 month suspension and so the project just restarted in the 1st of June 2021. So we're basically um, currently in month 21. It's a 48 month project. And the project funding is around 14 million, 4 million euros. And 
um, as already mentioned in the previous project, uh, the, um, the, the computer's idea concept um, is developed to try to find a solution for electricity load ship, shifting and power to heat. Because uh, we know that in the future we will have more and more renewable um, uh, energy sources, and we know that these these ones are intermittent, so they are not constant throughout the date, the day. And also that uh, the most of the um, of the electricity usage is used for uh, thermal end uses, like for example uh, heating and domestic heating and uh, uh, hot tap water. Um, and we have some peaks to, um, throughout the day where people tend to take more showers and heat their buildings. And these peaks normally are when the electricity is more expensive. So uh, that's when it's important to have electricity load shifting. So to have kind of more uh, balanced electricity load throughout the day in order to save money and also to use in a more efficient way the, the electricity coming, for example, from the photovoltaic. And that's uh, where uh, we um, develop this computer solution that uh, proposed to create a modular compact thermal energy storage for heating, hot up water and cooling in regard to domestic buildings. So here we have two different storages. The first one is a PCM storage that will store the energy when it's cheaper, when it's more available, and then release it when it's needed. And through the versatile uh, storage, it can become like heating in winter, cooling in summer, and hot domestic tap water. And the project is organized in different work packages. The first one was about the global context of specification. So we um, we analyzed all the um, legal constraints that are present in different European and non-European countries, and also all the structural constraints that are related to our demo sites, and also, for example, all the, um, fun the functionality and the components that the system should have. Then this information went to the um, system development phase where we have three work packages. The work package two is developing the two thermal energy storages, so the PCM and the versatile one. Then work package three is studying a PCM material that can suit uh, the computer's needs and can be then used in the PCM storage. And then work package four is developing the energy management system that will manage and control the whole system and the integration between the two, the two storages. Then uh, there, will, um, there will be the demonstration phase that it's pretty long one, it's one year one, it's it's very like it's divided into three phases and I will describe it later. And um, and then the results will be analyzed and uh, we will have some recommendation for the optim optimization of the system. And at, at the same time, we are um, uh, doing a techno-economic and environmental assessment and also market analysis to understand what are the potential of this solution for domestic use. And of course, we have dissemination and project management. And here we have a very diverse uh, consortium of nine partners. There's the CA that is the coordinator, and they are a French research institution. So they they are they are the ones who are who design the thermal energy storages. They did the characterization, and they also have a demo site. Then there's Roquette, it is also French, and they are a chemical industry, so they uh, they took care of the PCM material. Then Lilne is also French, they are a manufacturing company, so they, they will do the manufacturing of the storage. Then we have a university, the Denmark Techn Technic University, that um, will, um, will develop the energy uh, management system, and they also have demo site. Then IO from Poland, they do the market analysis and they also have a demo site. TBS from the UK, they also do the techno-economic assessment and market analysis. Voltalis from France, they were involved in the constraints and the, and the requirements of the whole system. And then we have a special partner from China, the Chinese Academy, Academy of Science from Beijing. And they are a Chinese research institution that helped us with the um, thermal energy storage characterization. And also they will test one of the storages, the versatile one. And then Amira is from Czech Republic and we do dissemination and management. 
And that said, the demonstration phase for computers is pretty long and pretty um, articulated, like pretty diverse, because there's a first phase um, where the different components of the of the solution, so the two um, PCMs, uh, like the two storages, and also the PCM will be uh, tested um, in, in CA laboratory. And then also the versatile storage will be tested in China at climate condition because it will be the ice storage, uh, especially. And so it, it, they will be tested in simulated conditions, and this will give us the references for the performances of each of the components. Then we will go to the second phase um, in a representative environment. So the PCM storage will be integrated with the energy management system in Denmark, and that will be tested in the, um, the DTU demo site. That is a smart house. And so we we will see the the references. For, we will have the references for for the energy management system, and it's in the TRL will be from four to six, and it's especially for the space heating. And then the third phase is the real conditions, which is the trickiest and longest and most complicated because we have a single family house in Poland. Um, there is a house where there's actual family living there and uh, the, our storage, PCM storage, will be used for domestic hot water. And then also it will be tested, like the, the system will be tested also in a full scale house in France, uh, both for domestic hot water and for heating. So it will be a real utilization where the, the, um, the storage and the EMS will be tested. And as we have different sizes, needs, and purposes, that's very tricky, and it's taking it, it takes a lot of studying. And also here we have some uh, like the um, we have the design of the PCM thermal storage. That as you can see, the design of the storage is done. The engineering is ongoing, and the prototype will be manufactured during summer time in 2023. Experimental characterization will, do, will be done in autumn, and then the testing phase, like the validation phase, will start in 2024. And uh, here you see that there are two main um, uh, two main innovation. The first is the three passes configuration because that helps like improves the, the ratio between the stored energy and the released energy. And then, um, um, uh, and, um, and then there's the ele electric charge that normally you have hydraulic charge with this kind of storage, but we went for um, for electric because actually with the hydraulic you need to uh, to supply like high temperature water in order to have the melting of the PCM, and also we would need to uh, to invert the, the 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 flow in the inch uh, like in the charge and discharge would be like more complicated, and also. Um, uh, um, yeah, yes, and the expected performances are 10.5 kilowatt hour for the domestic water production and the nine kilowatt hour for space heating. And here you see the versatile storage. Also here the design is complete. The engineering is also done. And as for the other uh, prototype, the manufacturing will be done in summertime 2023 and the characterization in autumn and then the validation will be done in 2024. And here the three main components are water, the serpentine and the encapsulated PCM. And there are, there's the summer operation and the winter operation. The winter operation that is done, that is um, giving space heating, works through the water thermocline and the encapsulated PCM and the expected performance is 11 kilowatt hour and for the summer mode um, we have like the, the refreshment will happen through the direct contact between the ice and the water and um, and, um, and the performance expected is 9.5 kilowatt hour for the challenges like challenges and next steps 
for the storages, I already commented it, like we will do the manufacturing in the end of 2023. And uh, the, the main challenge now is to not to have delays and to have everything delivered in time. And then we'll done instrumentation and experimental characterization. Then for energy management system, right now we're on the algorithm and then the low level EMS will be developed and after testing and validated, then we will, based on the data we will receive, we will do the high level EMS. For the demonstration, demonstration is pretty tricky in this project because it's very long and very diverse. And also we have different kind of demo sites with different needs. So right now we're trying to adequate the, the storages with the sites and with the applications, but we know that some challenges will come on the way and that we will need to fix them. And then about the market, like I said, Computest had one of the purposes was to enhance the collaboration with it, with, between Europe and China. Um, so in Europe, the market, like we did a like market study, and we think that for the domestic use, that is the main scope of this project, um, the PCM test, uh, storage are not competitive compared to, for example, the water tank because of the cost, because of the ease to, of use, and also because of the performance. But in large scale, like um, it, it would be like a valuable solution, but unfortunately for this project, it's out of the project. So it will be like a follow-up project that will be written in the future, maybe. And for China, this project was written in 2018. So it was different geopolitical situation. The, the pandemic was not there. So there was more cooperation between China and Europe. It was easier to travel. Whereas right now it's dif difficult to go there. It's very difficult to come here. So the, the communication and the cooperation of course suffered a lot from this. And also because of some circumstances, circumstances like we lost the Chinese demo site we were supposed to have because at the beginning on the third phase, we would have had a, a also another demo site, an office in China to test the PCM test. But unfortunately for some circumstances, they, they stepped out of the project. And so for us, it's very difficult to have a general feeling on the market, Chinese market, and also to have some concrete numbers. But we know that in China, for cultural reasons and historical reasons, they are very reluctant to have stagnating water in their house like for example they would go for a PCM test rather than for a water tank so we know that the market has potential but also in this case like it will be for a follow-up project when the global situation will be different and that's it that's our presentation that's our website and in case you have doubts or questions you can ask us now together with our known the project coordinator and it's here or you can write an email to our to our addresses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eleonora. Thank you to all. So uh, we go to the Q and A session now. Uh, you can open your cameras if you want, so our audience could see you. Thank you so much to, for, uh, to the audience because I see many questions uh, uh, coming. I will take the chance to answer the first one that is for build up. Um, they said, could you please share the presentation PPT after the completion of the webinar? You will have tomorrow the, the, um, the full film and PPT, PDF, not PPT, PDF uh, in the portal, in build up portal and um, this filming, it will be in our YouTube channel, okay, for, for all of you. So let's let's begin um, with um, the questions for um, Serena and Andrea. Um, they said, what are the criteria you prioritize in selecting your technology providers? What drives your decision? Thank you. Well, so <laughs> you can go, Serena, but in general, I would say that this was decided in the proposal stage, so we have not decided on these technologies during the project, but before the project started. Um, so that's that's why. Maybe Sarah can complement. 
Yes, so generally, let's say, um, for some, so we decided to structure Sun Horizon uh, by using uh, generally heat pumps uh, and uh, uh, solar technologies because back in the uh, end of 2017, uh, when actually the entire consortium wrote the proposal, uh, but I think it is actually a fact that it, 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 is still, it still stands with the current market, but so we identified heat pumps and solar technologies as the most accepted uh, technologies for renewable energy, energies at a time. So um, let's say we wanted to uh, test them in a real scenario and let's say uh, compile different technology packages with uh, the two most accepted uh, technologies at a time. Uh, also first uh, to, to see also how these stakeholders would uh, react, let's say uh, the feedback that we could collect uh, uh, by the um, testing of different technology packages in different scenarios. And also second, uh, of course, from the technical uh, point of view, also um, to collect uh, um, monitoring data and see how the technologies were performing in different uh, uh, climate areas. Uh, yeah, so uh, this was the idea behind, uh, as I said, the project started in 2018, so it means that it was written end of 2017, so a while ago. Thank you so much. Let's go for the happening project. John, uh, could you tell us more about your smart energy management system and the challenges you face it? Yeah, well, this, the smart energy management system is currently, let's say, <clears throat> under development. <clears throat> we are, um, let's say it's a complex, a bit of a complex pro uh, problem depending on how smart you want it to be. So we are aiming at um, uh, integrating also weather forecast, <clears throat> demand forecast and so on, in order to have, let's say, the, the full picture about what are the variables that affect the, um, the problem in order to get to the optimum, really the, the, the overall optimum solution. And in order to do this, we are uh, using different uh, let's say information sources like for instance the weather forecasts and so on and um, we are also working on uh, some uh, you know uh, neural network and different kind of um, um, uh, machine learning of uh, or different resolution uh, techniques in order to solve all of these all of these um, problem uh, and get to an optimum the main challenge or the main yeah the, the main normal in this kind of system uh, the main challenge is to decide how to operate the central heat pump as um, i explained it is the the one you can really play with because it's decoupled from the rest of the system sort of because of the the thermal energy storage that you have in between so the 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 idea is to optimize its performance uh, in order to, to get the highest uh, COPs and efficiencies in the in the system. So we have started now, of course, the systems that are already running, they are running uh, based on some, let's say, more simple uh, uh, reference control based on rules. But we are now uh, developing all of these smart controls uh, in simulations and so on, and it, they will be um, deployed soon in the demos. So we'll see about that. And we will face more challenges for sure. <laughs> you have more questions about this. <laughs> They're interested to know how long heat could be stored in the designed heat storage system and how low it can be functioned without solar energy supply for multifamily buildings. It all depends on the volume available for the storage. Um, in our case, for instance, for the for the Spanish demo, we have a 2,000 liter um, storage. Um, typically, this will be at a temperature, let's say, uh, as a base, it will be at a temperature around uh, 25, 30 degrees in order to have the, the heat pump operating at the highest or the, the best COP possible. But then, when you have the renewables, uh, like the PV and so on, if you have some surplus that you cannot consume, then you increase the set point of this heat pump in order to store this energy. 
So, um, I mean, what we see is that uh, with the surplus, because of course, first when you have the the, the PV or the or the renewable energy uh, produced, you should uh, consume it immediately with the, the with the current consumptions, which is the most efficient way, of course. But then we see that, for instance, with a 2,000 liter storage uh, plus also there will be some electric battery uh, of around uh, 14 kilowatt hours. We see that we are able to to deal with them daily, let's say, um, mismatch between the generation and the demand uh, throughout the day. And this, and also if the next day there is no sound, for instance, you can always take this into into account and overcharge sort of the 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 storage by increasing the temperature uh, and then use make use of it. So yeah, for instance, for a six um, six um, no eight sorry eight dwelling uh, building with a two thousand liters uh, storage, which is not so big, and playing with the temperature, you can you can manage. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. Very thorough explanation. <laughs> Minister uh, Carlos and, and Georgios, um, what are your security constraints along with the risk associated with ammonia liquid and evaporation? Well, the security constraints are defined in the standards that we are using for the, for the production of the system. And they also consider, for example, the types of alarms that are being used the amount of uh, ammonia that can be stored in a certain environment as well as where the system can be can be used so this has led that uh, we have, can only use it for example outdoors and in a, what is would be the equivalent of a machinery room so this provides already some design uh, guidelines on how to do this that are also detailed in this in the same standards. Do Do you think that the uh, use of ammonia in the head of our end users could be a drawback for the broader adoption of your system? It can be because we associate with ammonia as a highly poisonous gas. However, every time we are using more and more systems that incorporate the uh, gases that were considered dangerous for example propane heat pumps like before it would be unthinkable because you were thinking oh it's going to be going to be dangerous as well as for example that also has to do with the type of risk that we are taking for example with natural gas people are using their systems and an ammonia system has even more safety devices compared to what it, one is using every time the stove is open, the heating is turned on. So uh, it depends on how much risk is being placed and also on the how the consumers are being allied of their fears that this ha could happen. So obviously there is a strong safety component to be taken into account. For the system to be successful. And finally, could a steel LPG tanks could be used for the thermotechnical reactor? Uh, Georgios, do you have any <laughs> comment on this? I know that they are made out of steel, but I don't know if they have the same um, uh, characteristics and specifications as LNG. Uh, as we are currently in the planning phase, uh, I don't have the, um, the information as to if the characteristics are similar. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Combiotes, uh, Arno and uh, Eleonora, our audience want to know, um, she would like, Marilyn, in this case, would like to understand the role of Roquette Fresh uh, SAS as an industry specialized in manufacturing pharma ingredients in your consortium. Uh, initially, Rocket uh, is a manufacturer of polyol, which is which are used for food industry, for pharmaceutical industry. But uh, this kind of product 
can be used also uh, as phase change material. Uh, they have some high latent uh, energy, so uh, we have to. F they they show some issues with melting and solidification, but uh, they have some relevant properties to be used as, as phase change material. Very interesting. They also want to know if uh, the big storage tanks could be buried underground outside. The big storage tank. Uh, um, I don't really understand what is the question, the meaning of the question, uh, but uh, I will try to answer. Um, as said by Eleonora, um, one of the main conclusions at the moment is that uh, we do not consider that uh, residential scale for storage for, for this kind of storage is really relevant, and then uh, it will be more relevant to consider larger storage at uh, building scale or uh, larger scale also. So in this case, it will be re relevant to consider to put them outside, yes. Okay, this is more general, so please feel free to answer. Um, Giovanni said, very interesting, and thank you for the webinar. And he wonders if it's foreseen a life cycle approach, say 25 years, to compare the economic performance of various systems along with energy and environmental performance. Have you any of you done a life cycle approach? Some of you are very new ones, just uh, being awarded. Well, I would no. say we still have not made it, but it's, uh, it will be considered during the course of the project. Perhaps uh, Serena and Andrea, you are the ones that are finishing in September right now. Um, do you have that approach or, or is foreseen uh, in future? Uh, yeah, simulated data was used for the life cycle assessment, but I didn't perform it myself, so I don't know the numbers. We can send you the results if you're interested. And uh, once we have the monitoring data, we will use that to recalculate uh, the life cycle assessment again and, yeah, and compare it uh, with the simulated data. I believe it's important, no? Because all of you are working for end users, right? So we, we need to let them know uh, what is going to be uh, their, their income. Uh, they, 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 we talk about technicals, they talk about money, right? So they, we need to, to do these things. Um, there is another general question, or more for, um, I will say, um, Sun Horizon and Happening as producers. Can you suggest essential software tools for simulating building integrated PVT systems? Have you used commercial, perhaps, uh, already simulating tools? <sighs> Have you created yours? Um... Yeah, in the case of Sunrison, we use transits for the simulations. And uh, I guess the person is asking because the transit type for PVT systems is not so reliable. Okay. And what we have used for uh, because we have a dual sun as a partner in in the consortium and dual sun provided a a type uh, for their panels specifically for their panels that uses um, monitoring data so um, and it is commercial so <laughs> unfortunately okay thank you so much um more questions for minister in the line of ammonia um could you suggest thermal uh, chemical materials other than calcium chloride and ammonia? Uh, yes, actually there was uh, one proposition to use barium chloride, but there was the disadvantage that then we will need to have the, the ammonia pump circulating 24 hours, so then this uh, is not uh, feasible. Of course, there are other salts that uh, can be used, but the problem is that they are highly aggressive to steel, so they will corrode the tanks. So that's why calcium chloride is more or less stable, and then that's why it can be used. I don't know if, Georgios, you want to complement the question? 
the the other thing is that uh, unfortunately we need to to use ammonia because uh, the temperatures in which the cycle operates uh, is um, better suited for the use of uh, renewable energy sources uh, for the heat uh, because we are at low temperatures uh, and this is uh, pretty much one of the factors that led to to the, the selection of the specific materials. Perfect. The last question from audience will be um, the best software tool for minister design. I don't know if there is a tool itself, but they are quite interested in how, what, which tools are you using for for your designs? Although yes. not always commercial, yeah. as Andrea was explaining. Yeah, Georges will also complement this uh, question. Yes. Uh, well, it, it is not only one tool. Uh, due to the fact that we have. Uh, to uh, to simulate first of all the energy production from the renewable energy sources, which are, are variable, meaning we might have uh, PVTs or FPCs, flat plate collectors, biomass in some cases uh, with boiler. Uh, for that part, we are using mostly transits, uh, which is coupled through uh, through simulating uh, with Aspen uh, for the thermochemical reactor. Um, in order to model the the whole uh, the whole package, uh, so it is pretty much three uh, distinct parts. One which is written by the partners of uh, of Minister, uh, which takes data from the trances uh, and correlates them with Aspen in order to have uh, the whole simulation package. Perfect. Um... You all have talked about skills, mainly all of you have touched slightly the, the lack of skills. How, how are you, you are in, in several uh, levels of development right now, some of you are finishing, some of you have just begun, but how you see, and we are in the year of skills, right, uh, in the 2023, how, how is a skill challenging or jeopardizing your, your final outcomes um, or how you foreseen in, in some of your cases that skills is going to be a problem uh, for your final outcomes very briefly let's begin with uh, with um, Serena let's go by project so Serena uh, how you say it for example um, what do you mean with the skills uh, skills regarding in your case for um, works work efforts right how to to implement your your project? I mean, do you need the specific skills to to implement the the um, um, the project, the the Sun Horizon, or do you I think, for example, in, you... or Andrea, <laughs> in your in your case, yeah. okay. you are you are serve. No, I mean, for instance, I mean, in most of the cases, a tendering procedure was launched to select installers, and when installers were selected, yes. the technology providers, uh, for instance, in Madrid, the Dual Sun, uh, visited the the site and trained the personnel to to, to be able to install their technologies, uh, and also the the there is a one more package dedicated to improving the technology's performance. And one of the improvements that Dualsan made was that the fittings for connecting the, um, the solar panels among each other were very easy to install for any installer. Okay, uh, it's because yeah. in your case you talk about language barriers in in this case, no? So yeah, the language barriers were mainly for the tendering procedure, especially with uh, some demo sites that were in, in, in Belgium and everything needed to be in, in French. Um, yeah, and the installers saw a lot of risks, so finally they withdrew from the project. So, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. John, what about happening? Yeah, uh, what, I, what I mentioned about the lack of skill as, a, let's say, a drawback or a, a barrier for this kind of implementation, I think it was more general about um, um, the the market as a whole, as maybe maybe um, heat pumps are nowadays not a very common solution uh, for uh, multifamily buildings. But uh, other than that, I mean, what the project has developed is uh, just let's say an innovative combination 
of use to other conventional components. So, uh, of course, the micro heat pumps, let's say, they are innovative uh, solution, but as you saw in the pictures, they are quite plug and play. I mean, there's no major um, difficulty in installing them. And also, we all, we always uh, kept this kept this in mind uh, to to design a system which is as much plug and play as possible and which doesn't pose any kind of difficulties uh, or additional difficulties. So in our case, any installer familiar with uh, heat pumps or refrigerant cycles and so on could do the work. It's just um, it's just that let's say in the market these kind of works or these kind of systems are not as as common for instance in Spain as uh, gas boilers but that's just it I guess now uh, the, the things are changing and evolving quite quickly so probably there will be a higher demand of this kind of uh, skilled workers and we will get them in the future. Great. Uh, Minister with Carlos and Georgios, uh, there you have the chemical part, <laughs> so I believe uh, there need to be some skills there. Yes, yeah, also because in terms of regulation, you need the people that are certified to install that are that know about the ammonia, so this already restricts you to which type of installers you need, and also at the same time, uh, this can be an opportunity for new markets because it would be something that might develop in the future as well as for example with all the other projects with the new types of uh, systems that are being developed so there could be at the moment it might be like a restriction but it can also be an opportunity because obviously if these systems are being installed then clients will come to these uh, specific technicians Perfect. And finally, last but not least, Eleonora and Arnaud uh, with Combiotes, uh, quite technical and edgy uh, proposal for storage. Where Where is the skills there? <laughs> Eleonora, for example, <laughs> or Arnaud? Where is the skill? <laughs> Uh, do, do you think that uh, Combiotes uh, is on need of specific skills uh, to be implemented? Um, yes, for sure, during the installation, like for example in the Polish demo site, we already know that we will have some troubles to find like people that have the skills to install and to follow up on the on the project. That's for sure. Then I don't know, Arnold, do you have something else in mind? Yep, uh, and, and and just. Uh, I was just looking, just uh, regarding the three other projects, I guess that Combiotes is proposed a less ambitious solution. That means we do not want to try to, to change all the way to eat or to cool uh, an house. And we propose we do not propose a multiple storage in series in parallel. And so uh, from my point of view, it makes the solution the easiest to be installed. Because basically uh, the PCM storage is a single component, and uh, it, it can easily be it can easily be um, manufactured as a single component, just a plug and play component with a very low maintenance. Uh, the versatile storage is basically this. This is the same situation. So um, there's no specific skills. Uh, in any case, um, there, there's a need of more skilled people compared to classical water tank. In fact, and a final question from Buildup. Um, we, we have called you and we have put you together and we wonder if after seeing the presentations of all the rest, you see particular results of technologies that you could see working together in the future or future their projects. Do you see synergies in, uh, among you? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, please, Carlos, go ahead. No, no I, I mean, there are many uh, different technologies and common challenges and outcomes that can be used for future projects. Because, for example, I find it very interesting the management of all the heat pumps 
in the happening project, also similar results that have been found in Compo Biotes. And of course, the lessons that have been learned uh, from uh, Andrea and Serena. Mm. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah, I would say that uh, in in, in the, that the direction that the market and everything is going is that uh, as I think we have seen in all the projects, there's a um, um, greater demand or or of, uh, integrating somehow renewable energies uh, into the 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 energy supply of the buildings and all the technologies proposed here i would say they are to some extent uh, compatible in terms that um, you can combine some generation technology like pv pvt uh, panels then the heat pumps uh, using this uh, electricity or or using the, the storages uh, as a way to to store it and to to charge and everything so in the end i i think it's good that um, this there's uh, this wide range of options available so that um, probably we, we can find uh, useful combinations of different components that fit uh, that can fit best the requirements of different uh, buildings, climates, and so on. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's do a few conclusions and, and say goodbye to our audience. Um, first, thank you very much to all of speaker our speakers for such an interesting insight of the generation and storage technologies at building level uh, during the presentation it has been explained the need to develop appropriate thermal energy storage and production suitable for buildings to reduce energy electricity bill of end users main challenges have been thoroughly explained and uh, how it need to overcome in some cases the lack of standards and regulations at residential level to improve scalability of the concept and become financially viable and acceptable to end users in the short term several cases studies have been presented to illustrate the high potential of coupling heat pumps with advanced solar panels uh, that could also help to improve european current uh, renovation rates skills of the workforce continue to be kind of a problem Problem that need to be addressed uh, in order to reach broader and quicker audience. Thank you um, so much to everybody. I uh, hope that we meet again in, in the future and thank you to our audience for being so, so, so um, uh, active uh, in this webinar. Um, thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.